Hello and welcome to another video in the Clubrunner video tutorial series. In this video we are going to take a quick tour of Clubrunner's unique Website Designer 3.0 tool. We'll have a look at the essential functions of the Website Designer and quickly review the basics of web design. In later videos we'll examine these tools in depth. Your club has a web page and the Web Page Designer tool can make that page stand out from the pack. Whether you're completely new to web design or whether you've been coding for years, you'll find this to be a useful and flexible tool. To get started with the Website Designer, you'll need to log into your member site. Once you're online, click on the Website tab and then click on the Website Designer link. Note that you'll need the Site Administrator Access level in order to make changes to your website. Here we are on the main Website 3.0 interface. On this page, you can directly edit each of the primary portions of your website. Let's look at each part of your club's page from top to bottom. At the top, we have your page banner. The banner is the graphic and text that run along the top of your home page, as you can see in this example on screen. When you edit the banner, you have the choice of uploading graphics or choosing existing system graphics. You can also generate your own text. If you prefer to design a simple graphic, you can simply upload this as the background image. Alternatively, you can have a left logo, right logo, background image and text, which will combine to create your header. You can also create a library or a selection of banners to use when you like. Some groups like to change their banner regularly, reflecting the change of seasons, holidays or special events in their club's life. They create a library of banners to suit that need. Next we have the menu, where you can build out your club's navigation. Let's have a closer look. As you can see in this demonstration, the menu is located along the top of your home page, just under the banner. Here you can access various pages you'll be able to build within your site using the least links and drop down menus. We'll find out how to create those pages and links in a later video. Next we come to the meat of your home page, the content section. This is where all our homepage stories, events, bulletins, and more are set up. Let's take a closer look at this section. As you can see, the default content menu is divided into three sections, reflecting the placement of the content in three columns on the homepage. Within this template, the left column contains links, contacts, and other information. The center column, the largest, is typically used to display homepage stories. The right column is typically used for links, sponsors, and other content. However, each of these sections can be customized as you wish, and you don't have to make use of this default three-column template. You have a wide range of content templates to choose from, allowing you to make your page distinctive without the need of any coding knowledge. You can select from templates here, each with a different layout. Next we'll look at content. Content takes the form of tools known as widgets. Each of these items in the content area is a widget, and each of them represents a certain piece of information. For example, this widget in the left-hand column displays a list of club executives and directors. This widget, Upcoming Events, lists any upcoming club activities you have planned. You can access the widgets through these orange tabs on the left side of the screen. The widgets are organized under tabs according to their function. Simply browse the tabs, find the widget you want, and drag it into the desired place in the design area. Once you have placed a widget, hover your mouse over it. You will see a number of icons appear. Click on the magnifying glass to get a preview of the widget's information in a pop-up screen. Click on the pencil icon to edit the content of the widget. Click on the gear to set the name and visual properties of the widget. And finally, you can click on the red X to delete an unwanted widget. We'll take a much closer look at widgets and how to create them and edit them in another video. Back on the Website Designer page, we'll now have a look at the page footer, the final element in your home page design. The page footer is optional. Most organizations use it to contain some additional contact details, a slogan or copyright information. As with the header, you have the option of uploading your own graphics for the footer or of using Clubrunner supplied images. On the left side of the screen, you'll find links to a number of additional web design functions. Let's take a look at themes, which gives you the power to further customize the look and feel of your web page. In the middle of the screen, you'll see a preview of your web page as it currently appears with the settings and content you have in place. On the left side of the screen, you can select from this library of different themes. 
Each theme sets a new combination of background and image colors. Now let's go back and look at the settings menu, where you can change some of the general items and configurations of your web page. The settings menu item takes you to a page where you can set many of your club details, such as your venue, time zone, club logo, and more. If you're an experienced web designer, this is where you can upload your own style sheets using the Upload CSS link. With this capability, you can create a truly unique and distinct web page for your organization. And this concludes our short tour of the world of Web Designer 3.0. Join me next time as we take a closer look at some of the more specific functions of this powerful tool. So when the word comes down to roll the presses, there's an ink at hand more than adequate for the tremendous output of literature of all kinds in this best-read, best-informed nation on Earth.